day this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we can gather on your birthday. What a privilege, what an honor to come to worship uh, on the day that we recognize that you were born. Uh, Lord, we know that it may have not been December 25th, but we, we take this day to set it apart to, to remember uh, your birthday, that, that you came to earth, that you, you brought salvation to us uh, through uh, a tiny little baby, Lord, that brought your plan of salvation. Lord, uh, help us today as we come to worship. Just help us to uh, enjoy every song, every word sung, uh, the, the word that we'll get into later. Uh, we love you, God. We pray all these things in the powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 You would stand with us if you're able as we sing this morning.
Heavenly Father, we just come before you today. And again, what a great time to give you worth, give you worship, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the day that we can celebrate as a church, as, as a family of God here in Snow Hill. Lord, we pray that uh, today the, the worship that is given, the songs that are sung, uh, the word that is spoken, Lord, will be encouraging to you. We thank you that you are Emmanuel, God Amen. with us. Lord, yes. that you, thank you. You, you took the initiative, Lord, to come to us to, to overcome the barrier of sin that, that we were powerless to do. Lord, we thank you for that. Uh, be with us this morning. Uh, keep us warm in heart and inside as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning and welcome, everybody. We're glad you're here. We're glad you made it. Hope that uh, you had a good time this morning. If you already spent time with your family or, or this past week, some time, uh, it's good to see everybody here. And um, I'm going to take a few minutes and greet one another, Lord. So reach across the aisle and shake a hand and hug your neck, and then uh, just uh, we'll come back with our message in just a few minutes. <laughs>
Stage looks a little bit different this morning, doesn't it? <laughs> Those of you that were here last night, uh, you're like, wait a minute, that wasn't here last night. <laughs> so, with the transformation, the uh, Myanmar Baptist Church uh, this afternoon is having their normal service at uh, two o'clock, but they're they do a big drama production with the children, so that's you see all this. And yeah, it's great and everything. So they can decorate any time. So uh, I love the sparkle. So. But uh, they're coming to do that. They have a big meal plan. You know, it's, it's interesting how different cultures uh, do you know, celebrate Christmas. And it was one thing when we when we got together for our fall festival. And we said, "Would you like to come? You know, join us for our fall festival." And it was it's interesting. 
Um, you know, we've always had ours on Halloween Day as like an alternative. You can come here and have fun. You know, we won't be out in the streets. It's a safe place. And it was, it was interesting having a conversation with Pastor Abraham in their church. It's like, oh, well, we don't celebrate <laughs> Halloween. So like, neither do we. We just have it on the same day. You know, it's it's interesting. So. All right, well, this morning we'll be in, in the Gospel of Matthew again, uh, chapter 1. Um, we're going to look at the Christmas story this morning. Then uh, we've, over the last three weeks, we've uh, looked at four different themes, right? We looked at, at waiting, we looked at the mystery of Christmas. Last night we looked at redemption, and, and today on Christmas Day, we're, we're going to look at uh, Emmanuel, God with us, this, this God incarnate. You know, what, what does that mean? So we'll get to that here in just a minute. But uh, let me read the passage of Scripture to you this morning. Uh, Happy to be the same one we read last night. Matthew chapter 1, starting verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be with child. Through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man, he did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after she had considered this, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife and gave birth to a son and gave him the name. Just, I was just reminded as we're reading that, you know, this is part of this is not part of my sermon this morning, but you know, Joseph, we, we don't have one word from him, right? We have Mary and her conversation with the angel, we have the Mary's song she sings, but we have not one word recorded in scripture from Joseph. We only have his obedience. That, that's powerful right there. So um, this morning, uh we're going to look at Emmanuel, God with us. And, and I want to give you a, 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 you know, a little bit, a deeper look with that. What, what exactly does Emmanuel mean for us um, in, a, in a couple of different lights? And, and, uh, the first thing I want to share with you this morning is Emmanuel, God with us, means historically, historically, that the prophet Isaiah where we draw the scripture from, we're going to look here in just a minute. The prophet Isaiah was telling King Ahaz of Judah that God would be with him. Right? So historically, Emmanuel, God with us, historically, uh, originally in, in the book of Isaiah, the prophet was telling King Ahaz, who was a king in, in Judah, in the southern king there, that that God was going to be him with him through a trial, through a situation. Uh, if you will, if you, if you want to turn there, I'm going to go to Isaiah uh, chapter 7. I'm going to read just a little bit to you, you know, because you may have asked this, wait a minute, if, if it mentions this in Isaiah, how many virgins gave birth? We know about Mary in the, in the New Testament, but what about where, where this is talked about in the prophet of, in Isaiah here? So, we're going to look at that historically a minute, and then we'll kind of jump into the future. <coughs> but uh, what was really going on here, there was a, uh, a battle that was brewing between Judah, the southern kingdom, and also two other nations, Aram, which is Syria, and then Ephraim, which is uh, basically Israel's kind of cousins, their brothers, right? They had come up against Judah. They wanted to go to war against uh, the people in Judah. And King Ahaz was, he made some poor decisions. He wasn't the best king, but he, he sought out the help of the Assyrian uh, 
you know, nation to kind of bail them out. But, but God spoke to King Ahaz through the prophet Isaiah here. And this is where we come in Isaiah chapter 7. Let me start reading to you in, in verse 13 here. Uh, it's actually, we start at verse 12. But Ahaz says, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to a test. Uh, he, uh, prophet Isaiah said, you know, ask for a sign, King Ahaz, and God will give it to you as proof that he's going to take care of you. And so King Ahaz says, no, I'm not going to ask, I'm not going to put the Lord to a test there. Then, then verse 13, we see, then Isaiah said, hear now, you, O house of David, it is not enough to try the patience of men. Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. He will eat curds and honey, and when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose right, in the land of the two kings that you dread will be laid waste. And, and so here, historically, we see Emmanuel means that, that God is going to be with them in, in a way uh, that God was saying, hey, Ahab, Ahaz, I, I've got your back. I'm not going to let them defeat you. I'm not going to let them overtake you in, in Jerusalem along with you. And he, he, he said, go ahead, ask me for a sign. This is the one time God says, go ahead, ask me for a sign. I'll give you one. And, and King Ahaz trying to be all super spiritual, right? Like, we never do this, right? He, oh, no, no, I'm not going to do that. Then, then Isaiah says, no, God says you're supposed to ask for a sign. So now I'm going to give you one. And so here we come to this, this text that we read all the time in the, in the birth narrative in, in Matthew, and we're like, okay, what does this mean that a, a virgin in, in Isaiah in the days of the kings, that a virgin would be, uh, you know, give birth to a son, and she will name him Emmanuel. Are there two virgin births? No, not exactly. What, what's going on here, uh, the, the word in Hebrew, Alma, in Hebrew for virgin, can also mean a young girl, a young woman. And so, Isaiah, and it's just really, that's what it is in the language here. We'll see here in just a minute how that plays out in the, in the New Testament. But uh, uh, in Hebrew, that, that word Alma can either mean a, a woman who's never been intimate with a man, or it can also mean a young girl. And so here we see in Isaiah in the Old Testament that he's saying there's going to be someone in your palace, King Ahaz, that, that you know, that you're aware of. She's going to have a baby She's going to name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And, and Isaiah goes on to tell and explain. He says, before the child grows up to, to learn right from wrong and has the ability to choose, and we often talk about that, he says, I will take care of these two kings and these nations. You know, it's going to take place. So that's what God originally, historically, Emmanuel means God with us. That's what that refers to. Uh, it, it reminds me a lot of, of the New Testament, excuse me, New Testament scripture in Romans chapter eight. Right, many of you are familiar with this. Romans eight thirty one to thirty four says, "What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for all of us. How will He not also, along with Him, graciously give us all things?" Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. It is God that condemns. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. So I think the first thing that we need to see when it comes to Emmanuel, God with us, is just like it was historically in the Old Testament that God was going to be for King Ahaz and, and the kingdom of Judah. He says, I'm going to take care of your enemies. I'm, I'm for you. I, I think, church, we, we can see the same thing today for those who love God, for those who are called, you know, who follow him. God is for us. Now, hear me clearly. I'm not saying in church that he's going to take away all your problems. He's going to make this easy road. No. That, if, if you go back to King Ahaz, God didn't do that either, did he? he? There was war that went on for a couple of years. 
and it finally it was over. It was, uh, you know, God didn't just smooth out everything and make it. Put, and, and so, I, as a reminder, church, Emmanuel, God is with us. He for us in the New Testament today, you know, God is with us. He is for us, as according to Romans chapter eight here and many other passages in Scripture. Doesn't mean that He's going to smooth out our path and make it all great. We'll just have the best Christian life ever, the perfect marriage, the perfect job. You know, no. But but God promised to be with us historically. So that's the first thing I want to bring to your attention. Secondly, Emmanuel, theologically, Emmanuel, God with us, theologically, means that God himself became a man. God himself became a man. He, he came to live and to dwell amongst us on earth for just a, a brief period of time, right? Um, you know, we can, for many people, you know, they, they question, what, what is God like? What, what is God like? And, and very few people in the Old Testament where God spoke to them and gave them instructions. Well, we have a privilege, church, that Emmanuel, God with us theologically, God actually became a human man. He's, he's yeah. a God incarnate, 100% God, 100% man. Yeah. And we we beheld his glory, as, as the scripture says, that, that we we can look upon Jesus, and for many of us to say, what, what is God like? How, how can I know God? How can I understand what God wants? We know that God came to earth. Theologically, he is the God man. And for, for those of us who have questions, what is God like? What, what does God want me to do? What's, what's God's will for my life? All these questions. We can look no further than Jesus because he, he came and he displayed. I, I love what it says. Oh, I just want to read you two passages here in, in John chapter 1 and Colossians chapter 1 this morning that that back up. I'm just not making this up. Who, what are you saying, Pastor John? I, I, I believe this is a very biblical, scriptural uh, thing that we're talking about this morning. Should have put uh, the things to flip around all that. But at the very, very beginning of the Gospel of John, John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through, through him, all things were made. And without him, nothing was made that has been made. For in him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness is not understood. And then go down to verse 14, we're all familiar with. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Uh, so, so Jesus is 100% God. He, he is what we can view and look at as God. I want to read to you one more. Uh, Colossians chapter 1. You may be familiar with this. Uh, starting in verse 15. Uh, Colossians 1.15 says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for by him all things were created, all things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in all things, in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning of and the first more born among from the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased, listen to this verse 19 here, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile himself all things, whether things on earth or in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. So God with us, Emmanuel, God with us, theologically means that, that we, we can look to Jesus for our advice, for how we should live, how we should act. You know, children, especially people, you know, we, we learn best by 
following someone's example, right? But that, that is so especially true when it comes to children. Children learn, I think, best by watching and imitating other people, right? Uh, we, you know, whether we intend them to learn things or not, right? Sometimes we, oh, where'd you pick that up, you know? Oops. Um, but, but children are, are just like sponges, right? And, and they pick up all these things. Well, I think this is one of the reasons that God came, born of a, a baby, so that we, we would learn from him. We would pick up from Jesus exactly what we saw. How, you know, how, how did Jesus interact with people? How did he interact with people that didn't like him? How did, what did Jesus teach? We, we can glean in our lives God with us and, and look to Christ and say, wow, he, he handled that. That's what God would have me do. And so I, I think Emmanuel, God with us, historically means that God is with us. Theologically, God is with us to, to show us the example of who he is. And thirdly, physically, physically, Emmanuel, God with us means Jesus came to the earth to be the God, man, God incarnate. He wrapped himself in human flesh, right? He's 100% God, 100% man. Jesus took on, God himself took on a physical body physical body became like one of us he he identified with us I love what Hebrews says Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 through 16 it says therefore since we have such a great high priest who has gone through the heavens Jesus the son of God let us hold firmly to the faith we profess for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but we have one who's been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Church, I believe Emmanuel, God with us, God becoming a physical human being, I think it helps us to see and, and for for us to know when we go to the Lord in our times of need, when we have our times of prayer, when we are going through the struggle, we can remember that, you know what? Christ had struggles too. When, when we go through difficult times, when we have emotional and mental anguish that we're dealing with, we can remember that Christ also experienced that too. When we have physical pains, things that we struggle with, being sick or hurt, dealing with disease, we can remember that Christ, he felt pain, and, and we have that struggle too, and, and ultimately on the cross. He, he went to the cross, and that is the ultimate um, display of, of how Christ embraced his physical body that he indwelt. Uh, I think that's something we need to remember, that Emmanuel, God with us, is we have somebody that, like Hebrew says, that, that we can identify. He he, he's someone that's familiar with what you and I go through. He's not an almighty God that's never experienced the pain and the suffering and the struggle and the circumstances that you and I have. God has been there too because he became man, Emmanuel, God with us. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we have a Savior who not only saves us from sin, praise the Lord, but we have a, a Savior who understands what it means to be human. And to face the things that we do, to face temptation. You know, you go to Matthew chapter 4, and, and as soon as Jesus is baptized, he goes out into the wilderness, and what does he face? He, he, he uh, faced the temptation from the devil. And so we can identify, and Jesus can identify with us what it was like to go through there because he is God with us. And then lastly, this morning, I just want to share with you. Uh, one final and the, the greatest way uh, that, that Emmanuel uh, relationally or is Emmanuel God with us means that because God became a human, we can have a relationship with him. Uh, because God became a man, we could have a relationship with him. Uh, this is the relationship that he intended for us to have with him from the very beginning. If you 
were here last night, you know, the, the very first time that sin came into the world in, in, in Genesis chapter 3, when, when Adam and Eve took of the fruit that they were not to take, uh, you know, that this was God's plan from the beginning. We, we saw that in, in the, the, what was dealt out to the, the punishment there, but God already had a, a plan working. This wasn't a surprise to the Lord. He was, oh, now what do I do? God knew exactly what he was going to do. He knew that he would send himself. Um, and, and because he became a man, we can have a relationship back with God. You know, the, the disciples who got to walk and talk and sleep and hang out with Jesus for a period of a number of years, uh, you'd say, well, I, I don't get to do that. You know, he's in heaven now. Well, in a way we do. We, we get to have a relationship again with the Lord because Jesus is the one who came to make that relationship right. He came to take care of sin so that that relationship could be restored back with God where we were. Um, Galatians 4, verse 4 through 7 says this, but when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under the law so that we might receive the full rights of sons, because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. And when we get back into a right relationship with the Lord, when we come to him and we bend our knee and say, Lord, you're God, you're, you control my life, you you determine what I do or what I don't do. You teach me how to live my life, how I should live. Um, that relationship with God is restored. And, and we we get back with that. Again, not perfect. We still struggle sometimes in the flesh, again. But we are positionally made right with God. His, his blood, his sacrifice on the cross covers our sins. One of the uh, my favorite authors is Oswald Sanders. Um, he's passed away a number of years ago, passed away in 1917. But he, his books are still current and, and prevalent today. Oswald Sanders says this: "It says Jesus Christ became incarnate for one purpose, to make a way back to God that man might stand before Him as He was created to do, the friend and lover of God Himself." So relationally, church, uh, you know, Emmanuel, God with us, means that, that we can have a right relationship back with God. And that's why we, we celebrate Christmas. I, I want to end with uh, just an illustration. This is an old Paul Harvey illustration. And I, I know it's been uh, told here <coughs> in the podium before, but I think it fits perfectly uh, for this, this morning here. Uh, the man who I'm going to introduce to you is not a Scrooge. He was a kind, decent, mostly good man. He was generous to his family, upright in his dealings with other men. But he just didn't believe that, that incarnation stuff, that God would become a man. So the, the churches proclaim it all the time, especially at Christmas. Uh, it just didn't make sense. And, he, and if he was honest, he couldn't pretend otherwise. So... He just couldn't swallow the whole Jesus story, God coming to earth as a man. I'm truly sorry to distress you, he told his wife, but I, I'm not going to church with you this Christmas Eve. He said, I feel like a hypocrite. I, he said, that I'd much rather just stay home, but he would wait for them when they got home. And he, and he stayed, and even if it was a late midnight arrival, he would be there. Shortly after the Family drove away in their car, snow began to fall, and he went to the window to watch the flurries getting heavier and heavier. Then he went back to his fireside chair and he began to read the newspaper. Minutes later, he was startled by a thud sound, then another one, and then another one. Another thud. At first, he thought someone must be throwing snowballs against the window in the living room. But he went to the front door to investigate, and he found that a flock of birds hurtled, uh, huddled miserably in the snow. They were caught in the storm, and they desperately searched for some shelter. They had tried to fly, uh, 
out at, into this large landscape window that he had in the front of his house. Well, he couldn't let the poor creatures stay out there and freeze, so he, he remembered the barn where his children uh, were often playing, where the pony was. So he thought the barn would be a perfect place to provide them a warm shelter. And he could just direct the birds to the barn. Uh, quickly, he put on a coat, his boots, trampled out the, the deepening snow to the barn. He opened the barn doors wide, turned the light on, but the birds didn't come in. He figured out uh, maybe food would entice them. So he hurried back to the house, fetched some breadcrumbs, sprinkled them on the snow, making a trail uh, all the way to the, the yellow lighted lit barn there at the stable. But to his dismay, the birds ignored the breadcrumbs as well. And they continued to flap helplessly in the snow on his front porch. He tried to catch them. He tried uh, shooing them into the barn. Uh, one at a time, he tried waving his arms. Uh, instead, uh, they scattered in every direction except for the light towards the lit <coughs> barn. Uh, and then he realized that they were afraid of him. To them, he reasoned, I'm a strange, terrifying creature. If only I could think of some way to let them know that they can trust me, that I'm not going to hurt them. I, I just want to help them. But how? Because any move he intended to help them frightened them, confused them. But they just wouldn't follow. They would not be led or shooed because they feared him. If only I could find, be a bird, he thought to himself, and mingle with them and speak their language. Then I could tell them not to be afraid. Then I could show them the way to safe, warm, to the safe, warm barn. Then I would have to be one of them so that they could see and hear and understand. At that moment, the church bells began to ring. The sound reached his ears above the sound of the wind, and he stood there listening to the bells. Listening to the bells, pealing their glad tidings of Christmas. And then he understood and he sunk to his knees. That's what Christ must have done for you and I. He became man, Emmanuel, God with us. God, in order to help us, to help us fully understand that Christ himself, Jesus, God incarnate, he became a man. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time that we can celebrate Christmas this morning. Lord, we thank you that, that you are Emmanuel. That, that, that historically, that you are with us. That you <coughs> promised to be with us, Lord. We're thankful for that, Lord. We are thankful that theologically, Lord, that you are God incarnate. When no one else could do anything, you came to earth, Lord. You came to die for our sins. And we have someone we can look to. To, to be our example of how we should live. And Lord, we thank you also that, that you are God incarnate, that, that you also physically can, uh, we can come to you, that Lord, we know that you can identify with the hurts and the struggles and the circumstances that we face in life because you face them too. But Lord, most of all, we, we thank you that you are Emmanuel, God with us because you made a way for us relationally, Lord, to come back to you, to have a relationship with you, to, to see that it, it's our sin that, that we've committed, Lord, that keeps us from, from knowing you in a personal way, Lord. And, and, but we've been able to thank Jesus that he came to die for our sins. Uh, Lord, now as, as we come to this time of just reflection, I just pray that... Uh, Lord, you'll, you'll speak to our hearts. Show us what we need to do, how we need to respond this morning. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I'm just going to ask the priest team just to maybe play some quiet music this morning and just have a time of reflection. But uh, I just want to ask you, you know, Emmanuel, God with us this morning, Christmas Day here, uh, maybe one of those uh, ways that Emmanuel, God with us, maybe spoke to you a little more clearly than another one this morning perhaps maybe one of those is more meaningful to you than another one but I, I hope that if you are here that you can hear the sound of voice you're watching online this morning uh, you know that, that you have found a relationship with God through Jesus Christ uh, and, and if, if that's 
not you yet, I just want to implore you, please continue to check out what the Bible teaches about who Jesus is, what he did, and, and why did he come? Why was Jesus born? Why did Jesus go to the cross? Uh, I'd love to talk with you more about that anytime. Uh, but my, my only question to you this morning before we, we leave for the day is, is do you have a personal relationship with Christ? If, if you're ready to give your life to the Lord, if you're here this morning and you say, I'm, I'm ready to have a relationship with the Lord, I don't understand it all, I'm not sure I would know everything, but I, I want to follow Christ. I know that he can help me. If, if that's you this morning, I just want to encourage you to, uh, if everybody would bow your head, close your eyes one more time, Lord. If, if you'd like to begin a relationship with Christ this morning, just tell him a, a simple prayer. Say something like this to the Lord. Dear God, I know that you love me. I know that I'm a sinner. I believe this morning that Jesus died for my sins on the cross. That he came as a little baby to give me eternal life. Today, Lord, I come to you. I want to repent of living for myself. And I want to follow you and, and live for you. I place my faith and trust in you. Help me, God. Help me, Lord, to follow you and be Lord of my life. Come into my life. Give me eternal life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, if, if you pray that prayer, uh, you don't have to come down here this morning, but I'd love for you just give, give me a quick handshake. Say, hey, I prayed that prayer, and I just want to help you in your next steps as, as you grow as a new Christian, as a follower of Christ. And for others of you, if you want to come down here and just pray at the altar this morning, maybe perhaps you've lost sight of Emmanuel, God with us, that, that God is physically, he's, we can identify with him, that God is for us. Maybe we, we've lost a little bit of hope over the last couple of years. When we look at the world around us, we realize how crazy it might be. But remember that God is with us, church, that, that Christmas is all about Jesus coming to earth, God's plan of salvation for us. Uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to this time. Lord, I, I don't know if this will be a formal invitation or not, but Lord, I just pray that you'll move within our hearts this morning, that if, if we need to do something, that, that you'll uh, encourage us to do that, to step out of the pew and, and to come down and pray or to talk to a friend and, and uh, ask for help. Lord, I just pray that, that you'll uh, speak to each of us individually tonight, uh, this afternoon. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. We'll stand.
throne this morning. Lord, I pray even now as we take this time of invitation and, and, and close it now, Lord, I pray that you'll continue to speak to our hearts and minds today as we go about our days, we spend time with family, time by ourselves. Lord, I pray that you'll encourage us. Lord, I, I thank you for your word. Thank you for the plan of salvation that we can celebrate on Christmas Day. Lord, now as we come, we give our tithes and offerings back to you. Lord, we thank you that uh, just to think about giving a tithe and offering on Christmas Day, Lord, it's, it's just a little bit of what you have given to us completely, Lord. Uh, just the first fruits. Lord, on Christmas Day, you gave all. You gave all of yourself to us. And we rejoice in that today. But Lord, help us as we are just faithful tithes and offerings as we give to you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, while well, they're passing off from plate, you can have a seat. Uh, don't forget, no midweek activities this week on Wednesday. Uh, we'll pick back up a prayer meeting on January 4th. Uh, next Sunday, I want to invite you to a special time. We've done this now two, this will be our second year. Uh, January 1st comes on Sunday. We're going to just have a prayer service. We're going to meet at 11 o'clock again. We'll come in here, uh, probably sing a, a worship song together. And then we're just going to prayer walk around our church, uh, inside and out, depending on the weather. Uh, but we're going to have a time of prayer. We'll have some prayer prompts for you. If you want to pray for specific things, you want to pray for your 2023. And say, Lord, you know, we, we need you in 2023, just as we did uh, in 2022. So... Uh, I want to encourage you to come next uh, Sunday, January 1st. That'll be 11 o'clock. And uh, you can see all the other activities. There's, there's a, a kind of a slimmed down bulletin this, this week. It's out there if you didn't pick one up. Uh, it's got all the information in there about that. So God bless you guys. Merry Christmas. Hope you have a, a great, great day.